microphone again. I'd like to use the microphone. Hello? Kids? Sherlock Jones here. Wait, 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 wait. I need a microphone. What? I can't get a microphone? Well, Dr. Watson got a microphone the other day. Thank you. Okay. Hello, kids. Sherlock Jones here. I'm all alone this week. Yes, I know. I miss Dr. Watson too. That's his name, you know. The fella that comes out here every week and tells you about the adventures he's had with me. Watson was going to come out here and talk to you, but, mm, well, it seems that he's decided to spend some time alone this week. Not all by himself, of course. He's alone with God. So, I guess he's not really alone, is he? I mean, when I picked in on him, I saw him on his knees with his Bible. But God is there with him, right? Sure, of course he is. Um, I always found it funny that a fellow as sociable as Dr. Watson liked alone time. Me, I hate being alone. If there are no people around, I talk to my dog. Do you talk to your dog? Then my dog ran away and then I talked to the cat. Then the cat ran away and then I talked to my goldfish. He doesn't have a lot to say. Then the goldfish went belly up, buried him in the backyard. And whenever I felt alone, I went out and talked to him outside. His little tiny headstone in the backyard. Watson caught me talking to Jeremy one day. That's my deceased goldfish name, Jeremy. And he said to me, Jones, why don't you speak with someone who is listening? And why don't you speak to God? I thought, what an extraordinary idea. I've never spoken to God before. Never occurred to me. I asked him how to do it. And he said, go into your room, close the door, get on your knees, and just talk to him. Well, I have to admit, I felt a little silly talking to God. At first, I couldn't see anyone like, I could see my dog. and my cat and my goldfish. I wonder if anyone was even listening. But after a while, I got the impression I wasn't talking to myself. I knew God was there. I knew he was listening. I was so excited to tell Watson, but when I went racing to see him, well, he was in the middle of his time alone with God. Watson said, alone time with God is important for growing your faith. He even said Jesus made time to be alone with his heavenly father. Well, I may not be the world's brightest detective, but I don't have to be, you know, who homes to know if Jesus needed alone time with God. So do I. I hope that's enough to convince each of you to go it alone sometime this week. Go ahead, head to your room, close the door, Read a few Bible verses and just talk to God. Pretty soon you'll realize there's someone listening to you. And when you do, you'll want to have that alone time every day. Hey kids. Okay. Lauren is going to read through the memory verse and then I'll run through what our activity is going to be. And the memory verse for the series is, I spend time thinking about your rules. I consider how you want me to live. I take delight in your orders. I don't fail to obey your word. Psalm 119, 15 to 16. Perfect. Okay, so if you are here in person with us, or if you're at home with a few people, we're going to try something. We're going to go around the room, everyone read one word from the verse until we've read the whole verse. So we'll do that two or three times to see how fast we can go. Okay, so for everyone who's at home, uh, pop the memory verse up on the screen again and you can pause it for a few minutes. Have fun. Hey kids, has your family ever stayed in a hotel or a motel? 
If so, you might have seen or even used one of these. It's like a do not disturb sign. So if you're staying in a hotel multiple nights and you don't want someone in your room or you're sleeping in and you don't want to be woken up, you place this tag on the door, something like this. And it lets the hotel's cleaning staff know that you're still there, but you don't wish to be disturbed. It's a way to get a little extra privacy. Every day, we need to put up a do not disturb sign for a short time. We need to get alone in our rooms or some quiet place in the house with no TV, that's important, no smartphone, no music, no video games. We need to open the Bible and read. If you can't read, have someone read to you every day. We need to spend time in prayer. Just as Jesus taught us, by example, alone time with God can help us to revive our spirit, gain direction for our lives, kind of figure out where God wants us to go. Sometimes we need to get it alone. Start setting up some alone time with God this week and you'll be amazed at how much it'll grow your faith. What's one activity you like to do by yourself? I personally don't like to do any activities by myself. I like being in big groups. Sometimes in detective stories, we meet a detective who goes rogue. <laughs> All the evidence in the case is pointing in one direction, leading everyone to one conclusion. But something just doesn't sit right with that detective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They ignore the warnings of the chief to let it go, and they investigate on their own. The cop goes it alone because they know there's something fishy about this case. They're not satisfied. They want to find the real criminal. Mm -hmm. Going it alone is very much a part of the life of a Bible detective. We've learned in this series that the Bible is God's word. We are meant to investigate the word of God every day, not just on Sundays. I remember that lesson. Mm, yeah. That was a good one. And God has given us leaders and teachers and mentors who can help us answer questions and to learn to follow after God. That was last week's that was lesson. Last week. yep. Sometimes okay. though, we need to go it alone. God wants us to get alone with him. He wants us to have one-on-one -on -one time with him. Mm -hmm. Unlike the rogue cops, like on TV, going alone with God is not about rebelling. It's about reviving and refocusing. Well, <laughs> yeah. those are some really big R words. Yeah. Okay. Uh, really, it just means that it, you know, time alone with God makes you kind of just feel more <sighs> fresh. Yeah. yeah. When we take time to read God's word, to think about what the words mean, and to pray, God makes us strong and guides us. How important is it to spend time alone with God? Well, it's important enough that Jesus did it himself. Jesus, the Son of God, was always making time to be alone with his Father in heaven. Here are just two examples of times where Luke, that's a book in the Bible, mentions Jesus going it alone. And we're going to read from Luke 5, 12 to 16. Jesus was in one of the towns. A man came along and he had a skin disease. When he saw Jesus, the man fell to his face to the ground. He begged him, Lord, if you are willing to make me clean, you can do it. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing to do it, he said. Be clean. Right away the disease left him. Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone. Go and show yourself to the priests. Offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded. I, it will be a witness to the priest and the people that you are clean. But the news about Jesus spread even more. So crowds of people came to hear him. They also came to be healed of their sickness. But Jesus often went away to be by himself and pray. Hmm. Well, let's read through Luke 6, 12-16. One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray. He spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called for his disciples to come to him. He chose 12 of them and made them apostles. Here are their names. Simon, whom Jesus named Peter. Andrew, Simon's brother. James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, 
Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who would later hand Jesus over to his enemies. In Luke 5, Jesus had just performed an incredible miracle. These miracles always drew a crowd, and anyone who has ever been at the center of attention like that will tell you how exhausting it can be. As soon as Jesus could get away, he found a quiet spot and spent time with God. In Luke 6, after Jesus had spent time alone with God, he called the 12 men who will be his disciples. Every one of the 12, even Judas, was chosen after alone time with God. Hmm. If Jesus needed alone time with God, how much more do we need it? Being alone with God is absolutely essential to growing our faith. Yeah. Hmm. Our scriptures show us the two main benefits of time alone with God. First, God restores our spirit. It, it's like praying gives us a breath of fresh air. When we have had a bad day, when we are tired and we need a boost, nothing picks us up like God. So, it's really great to be able to pray to God and talk to him because he really helps us. Yeah, it really is like a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. So, Jesus often got a way to have alone time after a long day. He showed us through his actions that when we are tired, we can find rest with God. God lifts our spirits. His word encourages us as we remember all that God has done for us. God's word can give us joy and give us strength to keep going, even on a really bad day, our worst day. It's really good to talk to God when we're having a bad day. Yeah. yeah. Second, God refocuses our minds through prayer and Bible study. We can find the wisdom to make tough choices and plan our next steps. Jesus clearly took the time to pray about who would be his disciples. I think it said also the word apostles. Mm -hmm. These were 12 men that he was counting on to be the leaders of his church after he returned to heaven. Jesus prayed hard when choosing the 12 and even though Judas betrayed him, the other 11 men went on to spread the gospel throughout the Roman Empire and even to present day India. Spending time alone with God is how we get to know him. The Bible reveals to us story by story who God is, allowing us to have a better picture of who it is we speak to when we pray. God wants us to know him like a friend. He wants us to he wants to draw us close. Our alone time with God will strengthen our faith as God restores us and refocuses our mind. This week, I want to encourage all of you to spend alone time with God. Find a quiet place where you can read and pray for 10 minutes and keep that time with God every day. Ask God to renew you after a hard day. Ask him for wisdom to make a decision. Ask and he will answer. God is waiting to hear from you and if you get alone with him, he will answer you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now we're going to close with a prayer. Okay, kids, let's close our eyes. Dear God, help us to learn to make time to be alone with you. And thank you that we can talk to you anytime about all that we have on our mind and our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. Okay, here we go. Discussion question. Okay, let's see if you guys were listening. We can do it. Okay, first one. What miracle did Jesus do? Okay. I'm thinking back to the verses that you read. Mm -hmm. I think it was John. Was it John? Ooh, I gotta look that one up. Ooh, okay. Just looking well, there was a, a man who had a skin disease. Yep. I think we did a story before. Um, the skin disease is called leprosy. leprosy. Anyways, he healed the man. Yep. So all the spots that were on his skin Amazing. just disappeared. disappeared. And what did Jesus do after the miracle? Mm hmm. Yeah, he. Mm. Uh, he was pretty tired and he, he just he went away to be alone. Yeah. 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 And what did Jesus do before choosing the 12 disciples? This is really important. He mm. talked, yes, okay, I'm just going to jump in here. Yeah. He talked to God. Yep. And I think there was something about like even one of the 12 people that he chose betrayed Jesus, mm -hmm. but 11 of the 12 went ended on up creating the church. And how do we know that time alone with God is important? Hmm. 
think about the word example, mm. I'd say. Mm -hmm. If Jesus did it, then <laughs> I, I'm not better than Jesus, that's for sure. So yeah. if Jesus did it, I think that's a pretty good, good example that everyone yeah, should everyone. be doing that. It's important. Yeah. yeah. Now, do you know a quiet place you can spend time alone with God? Mm. Maybe that's a a question for you to yeah. think about like really depends on where you live some yeah. of the how some of the rooms in my house are just loud sometimes they sometimes i've really gone into loud. just i've been into the closet and just shut the door in the closet and just yeah, you could pray it's a quiet spot you go outside <laughs> if it's not too cold that's just right have quiet time on the deck and pray to god or you pray at night or a day there's yeah. all you know yeah. all right so this one okay for parents we have don't forget to go onto the website and download all of the activity pages mm -hmm. if your kids are going to be doing this yeah. from home. So we've got a make it stick sheet. We've got the memory verse that they can yeah, color in yeah. and then you put it somewhere. You yeah. know, I like to have the kids color it in and then I, I uh, <laughs> magnet it to the door or to the fridge. Yeah. So okay. especially the door because when I'm just when we're leaving the, from the day or and they can practice yeah, I can it see through it. the week. Uh, there's also some fun crossword puzzles yes. and some yeah, word searches. Crosswords. Some of yeah. the word searches are hard. Yeah. Some, some are, are easy. Yeah. So some you are can easy. challenge yourself. <laughs> So have fun with that and have a good week.